Okay, so uh, last we did bromide ion, right? Test of bromide ion, okay. Acha, one more uh, note I forgot to give you in that chromide chloride, chromyl chloride test. Just write down one note over there in chromyl chloride test. This test is not given by, this test is not given by um, chlorides of, is not given by the chlorides of mercury, tin, mercury, tin, silver, lead and antimony. Not given by mercury, tin, silver, lead and antimony. These metal chlorides does not give chromyl chloride test. This question they ask directly in the exam. And which of this does not give chromyl chloride test? So can you repeat the statement? This test is not given by the chlorides of is not given by the chloride chlorides of mercury, tin, SN, then silver, lead, and antimony. So can you repeat one? Should I write? It's fine, so you can just can you say the names I want? Chlorides of um, mercury, tin, silver, lead, antimony. Mercury, tin, silver, lead, antimony. Done, all of you written? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Next, write down iodides. All right, so the test here we have uh, the experiment and observation. The first one is with the drop off H2SO4. Violet color, pungent fumes, are evolved. Now in this solution, if you add MnO2, if you add MnO2, this fumes becomes denser. All these properties are very similar to the previous one. Okay, fumes becomes denser. Next one, in this mixture, we add sodium extract, SE, with dilute HNO3. We can also add here dilute acetic acid, with silver nitrate solution, AgNO3 solution. This gives yellow precipitate, yellow PPT, insoluble in NH4OH. NH4OH. 
In this also, we can have layer test. Layer test and we mix here sodium extract with CCL4. Apart from CCL4, we can also use CHCl3 and, car and calcium disulfide, sorry, carbon disulfide solution, CS2. Okay. If you want, you can write down CCL4, you can use, you can use chloroform, CHCl3, you can use CS2 also here. Plus, Chlorine water we also add. And we mix it properly, shakes it properly. Okay. So that organic solvent, the layer turns violet color. Violet, okay. But if you add excess of chlorine here, right, this is with this. Achha, just a second. I'll write down this way so that there's no confusion. With chlorine water, it gives violet color, Cl2 water, okay? But in this only, if you add excess of Cl2 water, chlorine water, So the solution becomes colorless. This confirms the presence of iodine. This is the experiment we have. Clear, done, copied. Okay, if you look at the chemical reaction here. Ki with H2SO4. KHSO4 and HI forms. Same reaction. With H2SO4, it reacts. Iodine evolves, gives violet color. Iodine evolves, forms H2O and SO2. In this mixture, in this mixture here, if you add MnO, <coughs> excuse me, MnO2 with HI, if you heat it, it gives I2 H2O and MnI2. AgNO3, if you add, so NaI with AgNO3, sodium iodide, so it forms AgI, that is the yellow precipitate of it, and NaNO3.
layer test is very much similar that we did already in the last one. Copy this down. <clears throat> yeah so i didn't have done no okay one just one thing you hear you just write down in the previous thing that uh you know the layer test that we have seen for this one for detection of uh, iodine layer test that we have, this solution becomes colorless here because of the formation of iodic acid due to the formation of iodic acid. The formula is HiO3. Only this point you keep in mind. <coughs> Okay, now next is test of nitrate. <coughs> test of With the addition of H2SO4, <clears throat> reddish brown fumes of NO2, reddish brown fumes of NO2 forms with pungent order. Sorry. 
with pungent odor. <clears throat> okay, again in this one, if you add copper in this mixture and heat it, this fumes becomes denser. Okay. Next we have here ring test. Ring test in this. <clears throat> in this what we do? Sodium extract plus dilute HCl plus FeSO4, freshly prepared, <clears throat> and H2SO4, few drops. Gradually, we add H2SO4 here. Okay, H2SO4, we add a few drops gradually. Okay. So in this, what happens, once you add all these things, <clears throat> a brown ring forms forms at the junction of the two ring, two, at the junction of the solvent. <clears throat> two liquids. <clears throat> Another test in this, <coughs> the reaction we'll see for this. <clears throat> That is a dye test. In dye test, what happens? Sodium extract is mixed with CS3COOH, acetic acid, right? And a few drops of sulfanilic acid. Sulfanilic acid is added and also alpha naphthyl, all these are complex, uh, you know, test in terms of compound that we use alpha naphthyl amines, alpha naphthyl amine we use. Plus, we also use zinc dust. When all these things you use, you will get the red color over here. <clears throat> this is dye test, this is ring test. There is one more test we have. <clears throat> and in this one, you see, in this one, we have sodium extract. And in this sodium extract, we add zinc metal, a piece of zinc metal we add in this. Dilute H2SO4 we add. dilute H2SO4 we add and we boil this for five minutes. Okay, so I'll write down simply here, we heat this for five minutes, okay? 
<clears throat> However, time and all is not important here, but we heat this. So when we heat this, what happens? <clears throat> so when you keep on heating it, okay, in some time, drop wise, we add Ki with starch. This solution we are adding dropwise in this mixture while heating this, right? After some time we are adding this. So in this entire process, the result that we get, the color changes to violet, which confirms the presence of iodine here. Okay, so these are the tests we have over here. Two, only two, only in fact, only one is important in this summit, which is this ring test. Copy this down. So here you see the reaction is <clears throat> the first one is <clears throat> we have NaNO3 nitrate iron and we add H2SO4, we heat it. The reaction is NaHSO4. <clears throat> NaHSO4 plus HNO3. Further, you heat this. Nitrogen dioxide evolves plus we get O2 plus H2. <clears throat> this only forms the reddish brown fumes. <clears throat> reddish brown fumes. Okay, now <clears throat> if you heat this with copper, okay, HNO3, if you heat this with copper, it forms copper nitrate, that is uh, Cu NO3 2 plus NO and H2O. Balanced reaction, if I write down, it is 3 here and then 8 and 3. This is the reaction we have. Now this copper nitrate is, because of this production of copper nitrate, formation of copper nitrate, the solution turns blue. Yes, same HL, same we have here. We have this only. In this mixture, if you add Cu, you will get this. The fumes becomes denser and we'll get this. Color also it is changing. <clears throat> NO further reacts with O2 here. NO further reacts with O2 and converts into NO2. So, yes. Is that blue color, that uh, inky blue color? Uh, see, uh, in, in different, different books it is written. You can say it is a shade of blue only. So if you write blue, that's fine. Okay. No, sir, okay. because we didn't lab, so I was trying to think. Yeah, that's same only, but in some book it is written. In some book it simply it is in blue. So it's fine. Whatever you say. 
NO plus O2 dissolves this NO2 gas. Ring test, the reaction we did already, same thing, brown ring, uh, three unpaired electron, paramagnetic, so that I am not giving you here. Right, the last one we have is uh, dye test we haven't done, no, okay. Dye test will write down. Okay, so in this one, what happens if you add that zinc dust in this right zinc dust you are adding so nitrate ion first this zinc dust convert this nitrate ion into NO2 minus and ZnO forms that goes out. This NO2 minus is now again it goes and it reacts with. <clears throat> it reacts with sulfanilic acid. Okay, solution is acidic. We have sulfanilic acid, which is this. Benzene, we have uh, SO3H here. And here we have NH2. We have acid, so H plus, NO2 minus from the above reaction and Acidic acid we have. So it converts into <clears throat> an intermediate compound, which is this. SO3H will be as it is, NH2. <clears throat> so with this H2 and O will go out, so we'll get OH here. So I'll write down this. So with NO2, <clears throat> the nitrogen gets attached over here and CH3COOH, H2O goes out, which gives here OOC, CH3 plus H2. Okay, <clears throat> now in this one, we are adding alpha naphthyl amine. So naphthyl amine is this. And we have one more benzene ring here. This is alpha naphthyl amine. All these are alpha position, this, 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 alpha naphthyl amine. And when this reacts, so this uh, converts into CH3COOH and this attached with the benzene ring over here. So if I go down and write down the product here, obviously this product you don't have to memorize here. Color change is important. That becomes red. So this dye that forms here in this uh, reaction, it gives red color. And that is what you need to memorize. Here we have NH2 and everything will be as it is. Plus CH3COOH. This compound that forms, this only gives red color. So it is red dye that forms.
क्लियर ओके नाउ लास्ट वन इन दिस वी हैव ऑक्सलेट आयन टेस्ट ऑफ ऑक्सलेट आयन विथ एच टू एसओ फोर इट गिवस कलरलेस ऑर्डरलेस गैस ओके करलेस ऑर्डरलेस गैस नेक्स्ट इज वी एड डायल्यूट एस टू एस ओ फोर dilute as to as a four and along with this we are heating this also we are heating this till the effervescence stops okay and when the effervescence stops or ceases we'll add a small you know amount of mno2 technically it is in a small pinch of mno2 will do once the effervescence stops okay <clears throat> then what we observe here we observe here brisk effervescence of co2 of co2 which confirms the presence of oxalate ion uh next is we have cacl2 test calcium chloride in cacl2 test what happens we have sodium extract add ch3coh acetic acid we keep on adding ch3coh till the solution becomes acidic and then we add cacl2 solution we get a white precipitate which is soluble in soluble in uh h2 dilute h2so4 in this we have one more uh, you know part if you add in this solution if you add dilute h2so4 plus few drops of kmno4 few drops of kmno4 the color of kmno4 of kmno4 discharged this is what we observed
done. Okay, now you look at the reaction here. The first one is we have sodium salt of this oxalate Na2C2O4. And when you add H2SO4 in this, it converts into Na2SO4 plus H2O with this carbon monoxide evolves and carbon dioxide also evolves here. Right? So this carbon monoxide burns with a blue flame. Near the mouth of the test tube, you can see that, burns with a blue flame. Later on, it gets oxidized into carbon dioxide. So if you have this Na2C2O4, and we mix this with H2SO4 with MnO2, manganese dioxide, right? So it converts into Na2SO4 plus MnSO4 plus H2O plus CO2. In CaCl2 test, what happens? Calcium chloride test. Oxalate reacts with CaCl2 to form a white precipitate, and A2C2O4 plus CaCl2 forms CaC2O4 and NaCl. This is the white precipitate we have. Further, if you add H2SO4 dilute in this, then we have Ca C2O4 plus H2SO4 dilute gives CaSO4 plus H2C2O4, which is a soluble compound. Oxalic acid. In this solution, if you add KMnO4 also, dilute H2SO4 and KMnO4, then I'll write down the ionic reaction because this reaction will use in redox also just to find out N factor and all. So this reaction you must know. Balanced reaction is C2O4 2 minus plus 
टू एम एन ओ फोर माइनस प्लस सिक्सटीन एच प्लस कन्वर्ट्स इनटू सीओ टू प्लस एम एन प्लस टू एंड एच टू okay this is what we get so this reaction you must remember it's not like in for this chapter it is important for to calculate n factor and all also this product is important okay now this is uh, for all these acid radicals we are done okay now few basic radicals we'll see write down the heading basic radicals similarly like we did acidic radicals acid radicals where we have different uh, ions present okay so here we have one second let's be just in this we have correct okay so different types of anions were there so here we have different cations correct basic radicals there like we have some preliminary test okay preliminary examination basic radicals also we have some preliminary examination okay so what are they so write down the preliminary test we have or preliminary examination for basic radicals the first thing we have here is again color change in color okay so i'll write down here acha this only will do this way if you have cupric salt cupric salt we can conclude that the color is blue here for cupric salt if you have green which are the same no if you talk about hydrated copper salts hydrated copper salts it can be green or blue also green or blue also and hydrous if you take and hydrous copper salt then it is deep blue deep blue 
ferrous salt is light green light green ferric salt is yellow or brown salt is yellow or brown so you have written anhydrous copper salt is deep blue but isn't right. it white is it white yes so like anhydrous cuso4 is white right? white crystals then we'll let me cross check because i have written here deep blue acha you copy this down i'll just cross check this once <clears throat> and hydrous for right yes sir yes sir and hydrous copper salt Uh, and address copper salt when it uh, oh it's hydrated no yeah it's wrong written over here correct hydrated one is blue and address this blue color is because of the water molecule so this one is uh, colorless or white you can write Okay, it's wrong written over here. Yeah, right. So ferric salt is yellow or brown. Uh, one more we have in this some uh, elements their salt is colorless, right? So these are write down here colorless salt. I'll just let me just see the space. So if you have salt of potassium. salt of uh, lead um calcium strontium we have a lot in this i'm just giving you some important one here potassium lead calcium and strontium uh barium and nh4 plus for all these salts it is colorless okay see basic radicals we can also differentiate or or you know detect uh, on the basis of their density like if it is heavy then it heavy then it is salt of lead or barium light or fluffy powder then it is carbonate of zinc magnesium and aluminum i'll write down first you copy this down all of you done okay so um sorry on the basis of density how do we uh, analyze obviously all we cannot do 
So if you have um, the salt is heavy, then it is most probably the salt of lead or barium. If it is light or fluffy powder, then it is carbonates of of zinc, magnesium, and aluminium. If it is moderate, means it is neither uh, light nor heavy in between these two. So light or neither. Light nor heavy, then it could be the salt of it could be the salt of lead, barium, aluminium, magnesium. Calcium. Okay, there's a change here. Here only. Just keep this in mind. Lead, barium, aluminium, magnesium, calcium, salt may be absent. So it's not confirmed. But it is possible that these salts are not there. Mostly. Not an important one, but keep that in mind. If it is heavy, then these salts are there, light or fluffy, these salts. But if it is in between these two, then maybe we can ignore the possibility of these salts. Obviously, it is not confirmed, but yes, we have a point over here. So some of them are overlapping. <laughs> yeah, that's why it is, because you know it's it's not fixed for all these things, right? Here you see magnesium also we have here. That's why I have written here may be absent, right? Because it could be. Uh, you know, because the definite range is not defined, no, like to what extent, after what point it will be considered as heavy, uh, you know, salt or light salt, it is not defined. That's why I said it is not that important, but when you have the moderate range density we have, then it may or may not be these salts. It can go towards the light side of this magnesium element, maybe here also, but we cannot, you know, say anything over here. Sometimes what happens, they will ask questions on this. Like, obviously we are not sure, like for some metal it is possible, for some metal it is not possible. But maybe sometimes they ask this question that based on the density, what all metal salts we cannot, you know, detect, right? Or we cannot find out. So for that kind of question, just to keep this in mind. Obviously, magnesium here also, aluminum here also, because the range is not defined. Okay, yes. so it's not a, you know, a great method to um, examine the mixture which is given, like what salt is present into this. But yes, for few metals, it is fine, it is true. So that's why we have this. Okay, now there are a few tests we have in this. Okay, you must have uh, heard the name. That is flame test, right? Borex bit test we have. So these two, We'll see. Write down the first one. Flame test. Since it is, uh, you know, basic radicals, right? We are using here HCl. In this process, what happens? We'll put some HCl. And we have a platinum wire that will dip into the concentrated HCl and will heat this in non-luminous flame. Okay, so we'll have the arrangement over here, but I will tell you what we do in this particular test. Procedure is not that important, but what metal 
gives what color in flame test that is important here right so we have few ions i'll write down here so we have metal ion draw this uh, column we have metal ion and we have color through blue glass if you see the solution with the blue glass then you will have a different color and with naked eye you will have a different color so both are like that okay if this blue glass is not mentioned we'll go for this right this session so if you have cu2 plus then through blue glass it looks bluish green and with naked eye it looks dark green k plus is pink here it is pink violet ca2 plus is light green here light green this is here brick red this one is important brick red once they have asked this if you have ba2 plus then it is bluish green bluish green and here it is grassy green grassy green strontium is purple and this one is crimson red crimson red we also call it as deep red these are the colors we have so we basically we have a, we have a you know platinum wire we use in this concentrated hcl right and uh, we take this uh, concentrated hcl in a china dish in which we put the mixture which we need to examine right we put, we put the mixture into that and then we moisten the mixture with the help of hcl right with the help of hcl concentrated hcl we moisten the mixture right and then we'll heat this we get the metal chloride that metal chloride we used to observe in or we heat in bunsen flame okay we heat this in bunsen flame and then through the blue glass or naked eye we observe the color which we get this so procedure is not important they ask only color for this like in flame test what all ions gives what color kind of yes you can say coupling so what's the point of seeing the blue glass uh see uh, the thing is when the test was going on right so usually what happens um naked eye we don't you know you know, you know the, the, like the preference is uh, we always use some glass in the lab in general right so there is not any you know defined way why we are using blue blue glass over here but the glass that we use there in the lab for this maybe why we are using blue glass maybe the reason is uh based on the study the kind of wavelength that reflects here you know it may affect the, the you know the eyes and other things so for that thing we are using generally blue glass in the lab not always we can use some other things also but when we use different color glass obviously the color of the you know if you simply if you use some goggles also 
right? The film that we have on the glass. Because of that, the color of the surroundings changes, right? So there is no any defined purpose for blue glass. Okay. Usually what happens in the lab when we have this test, we'll be using blue glass only. So because of that, the color observed is this. That's why in the exam, I have never seen this question that they asked in the exam. What happens? What will, will be the color when we see through the blue glass? So there's no point of this actually. Okay, they simply ask this question that the color of one particular ion in the flame test is. So always we answer with this that take it right. So there is no defined purpose for blue glass. Okay. Color change obviously will be there whenever you have a glass, we are using some goggles or anything, it will change the surroundings color, the reflection and all, right? So that's yes. how the thing is. <clears throat> Okay, so one thing you must take care here, when we put concentrated HCl, right, and the platinum wire in concentrated HCl that you dip, right, and we heat it in non-luminous flame, right? If it imparts any color to the flame, we repeat the same process again and again, right? So basically we take HCl in China dish, we put some you know, uh, HCl into it, we immerse platinum wire into this, and the mixture that we take, we heat that mixture in China dish, that dish will be properly dried, mm -hmm. otherwise there will be some reaction. So when we heat this in non-luminous flame, it imparts the mixture mm -hmm. that you are taking, it imparts certain color to the flame. We repeat this process again and again until the color is no longer visible, right? until the color is no longer visible then what happens we will we like we will wash the the apparatus that we are using that china dish that we have and we place a fresh mixture of the same uh, compound that we have and hcl into that and we again heat this to the bunshen flame okay the mixture should be moistened with hcl right and then we'll observe this with naked eye and with the blue glass, right? So blue glass, like I said, there is no any defined purpose for this. And we observe these, this color. So like I said, the procedure is not important. You need to know the ions and their colors in this test. Understood this? So there is, uh, you know, two more tests we have uh, that I think you need to do. Uh, I will tell you what all things, and all these tests you need to know the color of the complex that you are getting, correct? So the test is, I'll write down here. You can uh, go through on your own, but we have, we, have, we have done enough in this particular chapter. One test you must do that is Borex speed test. Okay, three, four tests I wanted to do, but we do not have time now. Borex speed you can do. Uh, the color you need to memorize here. One more we have that is uh, cobalt nitrate test. Cobalt nitrate test. Okay. Till now the important one are flame test and borex bit. Okay, on this you, they have asked questions sometimes before. Okay. Cobalt nitrate test and the last one is microcosmic salt bit test. Right, so these three tests you finished on your own, right? Any book if you have, you can refer that. Or if you want notes, I can provide on this. Okay, these three tests. And rest the chapter is almost done. Okay, we have many things in this, but uh, yes, for, uh, you know, men's level and uh, we have done enough of it. Few things are there that you can, I think, go through on your own. If you want, I can provide you the notes on this. Fine guys, understood? So can you okay, send yeah. notes on the group? Sorry? So can you just send the notes on the group? Yeah, this one I'll send for sure. Yes. And you want notes for this also? No, sir, like, I mean, uh, the extra material for this chapter. Huh, so like for this chapter as such, we'll jump there. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. I will share that. I have. Uh, I I will definitely have some PDFs for this. Okay, I will share that. Because I didn't okay. find it in like the book I have. The books I have. Left. So. Ah, uh, so book you can go through, but commander. in the book there is so book you can go through, but in the book there are so many things written. Okay, so you won't understand the important point if you have some notes or some coaching institutes material. If you have, then they have given especially for these chapters they are given the precise notes. Yes. That sir. whatever you need. that is written over there okay so i will i will definitely have few notes on this i have to check okay so we'll provide you that notes okay let's just go through them now okay so next class guys we'll be having crash course on mole concept mole concept and uh, atomic structure okay we'll have two session for this correct if you look at the planner mole concept will doing the everything it's not like only molarity molarity till we'll do Uh, n factor normality everything will cover here only we'll finish everything correct so we have two sessions both chapter will finish fine so uh, come prepare for this uh, theory you can revise and you can come for this yeah everything is as, is as, as per plan whatever planner we have shared no we'll go according to that only so you can stick to that plan for every class okay Yeah thank you so much guys take care bye thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir